I bring greetings from Bishop Mark Meyer, who as we speak is gathered at the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist, conferring the sacrament confirmation on members from several parishes in the Savannah Deanery. He extends his greetings and blessings to Monsignor Cuddy on his 60th anniversary. I want to recognize in a special way the nephews of Monsignor Cuddy, Michael, John, and Stephen, gathered here in the front view, and Stephen's fiance, Linda Bunta. Did I get that correct? You're very, very welcome, all of you. I'm so glad you could join your uncle for this happy occasion. Also, my gratitude for to Alan MacDonald for this invitation, Father David, to the deacons, Don Coates, Tom Eden, and Dave Hayden, to Father Monsignor Cuddy's caddies and caregivers. They are gathered here. The ladies and gentlemen who have taken care of him, bringing him to the doctor and making appointments, taking care of him different occasions and I'm very grateful for your presence and gratitude for your service for, for to Father Cullen. I want to thank the priests. Thank you for your presence. There is nothing to equal turning up and being present for an occasion like this. It is heartwarming to the people. It is a sign of our solidarity in the Presbyterate. And I know that it means an awful lot personally to Monsignor Cuddy. I was going to start my homily by saying, whereas, whereas, whereas. <laughs> Many significant happenings took place 60 years ago, and I challenge your memory. Do you, re do you recall that Joseph Stalin died in Moscow at the age of 73? Also, the polio vaccine was used successfully for the first time 60 years ago. Queen Elizabeth still reigning Doug Clark will be delighted with this. Queen Elizabeth II was crowned Queen of England. Edmund Tillery was the first climber to scale successfully Mount Everest. This may be good news or bad news, but the Yankees won the World Series not just 60 years ago, but they won it for the fifth time in succession. And finally, a person by the name of John Cuddy was ordained a priest at St. Joseph's Cathedral in Martford, Connecticut, by Bishop Henry J. O'Brien on Ascension Day, 1953. Are we not blessed to be part of this event? Are we not blessed to be in the presence of Monsignor Cuddy as we offer this Mass of Thanksgiving? For 60 years, Monsignor Cuddy has been exemplary in his modeling of the priesthood and in his service to the people of God. He has served in Columbus. His first appointment for four years as an associate the late Monsignor Diamond. He became pastor of Tybee. <clears throat> Tybee Island, for those of you not familiar, it's <clears throat> about 15 miles from the city of Savannah on the Atlantic. And for the past 39 years, he would never survive under Bishop Hartmeyer. <laughs> For the past
last 39 years, he has been here in the Macon area. Thursday is pastor of St. Joseph's and nine years in retirement. And during his priesthood, he had many significant diocesan appointments, including nine years as a teacher and vice rector of St. John Vianney Minor Seminary. And he was also for a number of years the superintendent of schools. I could spend the next several hours telling and retelling the marvelous qualities of John Cuddy. But what is the point? You know these qualities better than I do. You could be bored by learning the obvious. So I decided to speak about his negative qualities. <laughs> Since I could not scrape up enough of these, that would also be a waste of your precious time. <laughs> the Church strongly suggests that the homily should be based on the scripture readings of the day. Here goes, and forget for a while on senior cutting. Last year I had the opportunity to visit Athens, Greece. I climbed up the Acropolis and I beheld the wonder of the Parthenon, a temple to the gods built five centuries before the coming of Jesus. Paul, according to today's first reading, visited this religious center to proclaim the word of the living God and listen to what he had to say. You Athenians, I see in every respect you are very religious. I proclaim to you the God who made the world and all that is in it, nor is he served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything. He continued in that discourse so that the people might seek God, even perhaps grow for Him and find Him, though indeed He is not far from many one of us. Consolation for all of us. God is not far from any of us. My dear people, what Paul was preaching in Athens 2,000 years ago, the Lord continues that mission during our lifetime. Monsignor Cuddy was emulating Paul, and he has been doing so for the past 60 years, bringing people to Christ. In clerical circles, referring to the priests here and those absent, we christened Monsignor Cuddy's approach to the RCIA process as the Cuddy Right. <laughs> Perhaps we were envious that he was so successful as God's instrument in bringing Christ to others. I remember well one of my visits, perhaps coming to Macon, and I spent some time with Monsignor Cuddy. And this happened many years ago. We stopped to get gas. At that time, he was driving a Beetle Volkswagen. It also had many bumps in it, by the way. <laughs> I sat in the car for 30 minutes while John Cuddy carried on an animated conversation with the garage attendant. In time, another convert from faith. 
I would say that John Cuddy constructed his own Acropolis. He spoke God's word in season and out of season. He immersed himself in the mind and heart of Jesus. He walked the highways and byways of the land of Jesus. The Holy Land was John Cuddy's second home. The archives and the security cameras of the city of Jerusalem indicate that a person by the name of John Cuddy stayed in the same pension during the same month each year for several successive years. He also went to the same restaurant every evening for an order of pork chops. Monsignor Cuddy, because of his frequent visits to the Holy Land, he absorbed in a deep way the life and times of Jesus our Savior and his message of love and forgiveness. Today's Gospel echoes the same sentiment. The words of Jesus are as follows. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Jesus gives us everything. That has been and will continue to be the message of Monsignor Cuddy. He reinforced the message of preaching and sharing the mystery of God's love for all whose lives he has touched and indeed continues to touch. He was practicing the new evangelization long before it became a catchphrase. In conclusion, I am confident that Monsignor Cuddy will agree with the sentiments of the following reflection. My research indicates that it was done by a Jesuit by the name of John Paul. But there are others who credit this reflection to Henry Newman. In any case, it's a beautiful reflection and I offer it to you. There is an old Christian tradition that God sends each person into this world with a message to deliver, with a special song to sing for others, with a special act of love to bestow. No one else can speak my message, or sing my song, or offer my act of love. These have been entrusted only to me. According to this tradition, the message may be spoken, the song sung, the act of love delivered only to a few or to all the people in a small town, or to all the people in a large city, or even to all the people in the whole world. It all depends on God's unique plan for each unique person. So from my heart, I want to say this to you. Please believe that you have an important message to deliver. You have a beautiful song to sing and a unique act of love to warm this world and to brighten its darkness. And when the final history of this world is written, your message, your song, and your love will be recorded gratefully and forever.